Hi, this is multivariable calculus, and we're doing 16.3 triple integrals. And so we're going to advance what we've been doing and step it up a little bit with triple integrals as an iterated integral. So we can take this over some region, and now the region is going to be three dimensions. And so when we do that, we're going to end up with this right here as our triple integral. Now, it could be dx, dy, dz, or else you can rearrange those orders, but then the corresponding limits do have to match up with all of that. So let's look at our first example. This is the same exact example that we had in 16.2, but we want to try to do it now with a triple integral. So we have this building that has a flat roof, 20 meters high at its highest point, 15 meters high at adjacent corners of the roof. The base is 10 by 15. So the first thing we should do is draw a picture. So here's the picture. And then we did find out that the plane that's on the roof did turn out to be 20 minus 1 half x minus 1 third y. That's because when I go in this direction, the slope of this thing is going to be negative 1 third. And when I go in this direction here, the slope is going to be negative 1 half with this being orientated as my origin. So what we want to do then is we want to go ahead and find the volume of this thing. So we're going to set up a little column here. If I can draw this. And we're going to have this little column in here that's going to represent one piece of what we're dealing with. And so this is uh, my kind of my height is going to go up to the ceiling. Well, the ceiling is this right here. So with my z's, I'm always going to hit the ceiling. So I'm going to be going from 0 to this 20 minus 1 half x minus 1 third y. And so then what is the value? Well, when I look at each one of these boxes, each box has a value. The value is going to be 1. And so it's kind of like the volume of each one of those individual boxes, one by one by one. You can consider it to be that. But that would be what we're starting off with. And then if I expand this, I want to go in the y direction. So when I do this, I'm going to create a row of these going across. And so this is going to be what I have in here. So I'm going to have one row of these. Now, those rows are going to start at 0 and go all the way to 15. So when I want to represent that, I'm going to do the y's, and it's going to be from 0 to 15, because that's how I'm going across here. Now let's finish off with the x's. Well, now I'm going to take, and I'm going to replicate each one of these. In this case, they're always the same. They might not always be the same, depending upon what you have. But I'm going to run these all the way across, and then this is from 0 to 10 that I'm going to end up with. That is in my x direction. So this is going to be dx at the end, and then I'm going to go from 0 to 10. So there's my triple integral. And so we did double integrals before, and then we just used this as the value of each one of those pieces that I did have inside. But now you can do a value of 1, but then you run the height from 0 to this value. So if I do a triple integral, I'm just going to start with this piece, find the antiderivative, which is z, and I'm just going to run it like this. And then I turn it into a double integral by evaluating this integral right here and then putting it inside. Now some things to note here. I can, in my inside integral here, I can use variables, or I should say the other two variables, of what I'm working with. So I can put things in for the limits of integration in terms of y and x. Now as I move out, since this is this term right here, I can only use x's because that would be in the last variable here. So I want to be, once I get out to here, everything in x's because I'm on the outside. So in other words, on the very most inside, I can use two of the other variables. On the next one, I can use the variable of the outermost one. And then at the end, this is always going to be constants. Constants right here on this last one. So you can look at orientations and see what's going on when you, when you work with the homework, but that's what you need to do. 
Now, you may have had a couple problems like this in your uh, last section where we did do <coughs> this right here, density functions. And when we do density functions, what that means is that over my interval, somehow, some way, the density of each one of these mini little blocks, depending upon how big you make them, is going to be different and it's going to be based upon some formula. When that happens, we can go ahead and find the volume I'm sorry, find the density, and which would probably give us the mass, depending upon what we're looking at, by doing the triple integral over our base and then using the density function as the integrand of, of the inside. Then also, if we put this one here, like I just did, then that would just give me the volume, assuming that each one of these little squares has a value of density of one. So for example, number two, I want to do the same exact thing that I just did, except for I want to go ahead and have a density function of 20 minus z. That kind of means that as I go down here, well, let's say that we filled this building with cement or some other kind of solid. The density would be down at the bottom, it would be like 20, and this would be kilograms per meter, uh, cubic meter, would be very heavy. And then as I go up here, so halfway would be 10, 20 minus 10 is 10, so then my density becomes less. And when I get to the top, my density becomes zero at the very corner right here. That's what this 20 minus z does mean. So when we have a density function, it should be in uh, weight divided by, or I should say mass divided by your volume. So for our building that we had above, we set this up exactly the same, except for we're going to have this 20 minus 1 half x minus 1 third y. And then inside here, I'm going to have 20 minus z as my integrand. And this would be dz. And then I go out from there, 0 to 15 for my y's. And then I'm going to go from 0 to 10 for my x's. And so now let's crank this thing out. So I start by taking the antiderivative with respect to z on this inside here. And so I get 20z minus z squared over 2. I'm going to evaluate that from 0 to 20 minus 1 half x minus 1 third y. When I do plug that in for both of these, I do get what I have down here. So that's why I put it there, so I, I could take care of business that way. And so when I plug this in with the uh, upper limit and the lower limit, I'm just going to get this here. So now my integral becomes 0 to 15 of my negative x squared over 4 plus x times my 10 minus y over 4 minus y squared over 16 plus 5y, and that's going to be dy, and then 0 to 10 on my x's. So now I'm going to go ahead and take the antiderivative of this with respect to y. So this one doesn't have any y's, so I just tag that one along. This is just treated like a constant. And then I have 10x here, so I combine those, and so I get 10x, that's like a constant, I get the y. And then this one, minus xy over 4, so I'm going to go xy squared, so I'm going to take the y squared over 2, and then put the 2 with the 4, make 8. And then this one's just y cubed over 3, so then I get 48. And then 5y squared all over 2, that's what I'm going to end up with. And if I plug in 15 and 0 in for the y's, so I do my uh, simplification here. And I'm going to get a polynomial all in terms of x, as you see it here. And I'm just going to punch that into my calculator because I'm a little tired. <laughs> this one got a little involved. And what I end up with is this right here. Now, the question is, is what is that number represent, or what does that number represent? Well, let's go back to what we had up here. And when we had up here, this is our density function, which is kilograms per cubic meter. And so when I put that into here, this is kilograms per cubic meter. So that's my units, kilograms per cubic meter. Well, what is uh, Z measured in? Well, if you go back up to the example, that is meters. 
What is y measured in? Well, that's meters. And what is x measured in? And that's going to be meters. So when I look at this, this is going to cancel. And so when I add all these things up, I'm just going to end up with kilograms. So this is how much this building would weigh if we had it filled up with a solid that was based upon this density function right here. Now if we go back up to here and we evaluate this right here, what does that give us? Well, that would also give us the uh, weight of it if each one of those uh, values was a 1. Okay, we don't know if it's a 1 or not. But really what this does give us up here is the volume. Because if we have a weight of 1 for each one individual little box, then that's going to give us the same thing as the volume. Okay, I hope this made sense. We got triple integrals, start at the inside, work your way out, fix those variables uh, when you need to, and then look at the limits and make sure things do work out. If your gift did not show up on your paper, there it is, and then that's the end of this, and I sure hope you have a tremendous day. Take care. Bye-bye.